On this episode of China Uncensored, China is going through a big change. People are getting rid of their cash. Not like that. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Shelley Zhang, the voice in Chris's ear and your temporary host until Chris realizes how much he misses New York City in the winter. Or we all move the show to Hawaii. You know, when I was a kid, I thought the future would bring us robot maids and flying cars. Instead, we got cats on Roombas and the ability to pay for bus rides with our phones. If anyone in the flying car future wants to trade, call me. Unless you're also possibly about to go to war with North Korea. Anyway, the point is the future is now, and it's in China, because China is getting rid of old-fashioned cash in favor of paying for stuff with your smartphone. Whether you're at a vending machine, a toll booth, or a literal meat market, nothing makes you forget how much you're actually spending. Like scanning a QR code, it's faster than the speed of regret. Mobile phone payment in China has skyrocketed. It was basically nothing in 2012. By 2016, it had reached more than five trillion dollars, and it's projected to be more than ten trillion dollars this year. One analyst predicts that China will be effectively cashless in five to ten years, and that this is a positive thing for business, the government, and the public. China is moving really fast on this, much faster than the U.S. I mean, we do have it here too, like how your iPhone keeps prompting you to add Apple Pay, which you finally did, but you still haven't used it because your credit card works perfectly fine. Well, in China, most people don't use credit cards. The entire country basically skipped that step. It's partly for cultural reasons, like having debt was seen as a bad thing. It also didn't help that Chinese officials made it really hard for Visa and Mastercard to access the Chinese market. Americans, on the other hand, still use mostly credit cards. In 2016, Americans spent only 112 billion dollars through mobile payment apps like Apple Pay. Now that might sound like a lot, but it's not. Chinese citizens spent 50 times as much using their phones. They're not using Apple Pay though. Most people are using one of only two giant Chinese homegrown payment services: AliPay and WeChat Pay. WeChat Pay is owned by Tencent, which created the WeChat app. That all-knowing social media app that's constantly watching you, as Chris showed in our episode on August 23rd. AliPay is even bigger. It's owned by Ant Financial, which I mentioned on Monday. It failed in its bid to take over an American company. These two giant companies have cornered China's mobile payment market, and they're on track to make billions of dollars from it. Between the two of them, in 2016, they processed as much as five trillion dollars in electronic payments, which is equal to a third of China's GDP. Nearly all merchants in China's biggest cities allow customers to pay with AliPay and WeChat. It's so common that 14 percent of Chinese people don't even carry cash anymore. Now, such a massive shift in how people spend money will affect everything, from China's overall economy and society down to the life of your average Joe. The biggest benefit for Mr. Joe is, of course, convenience. Forget fumbling for your wallet; just pay with your phone, which you're already holding all the time. But convenience does come at a cost. For one, people tend to spend 12 to 18 percent more when they don't use cash. I mean, when you can't see the money disappearing from your wallet, it's easy to lose track of how much you're spending on books and shoes and. I should probably return some stuff. <laughs> well, in addition to spending more, all of Mr. Joe's spending is now tracked. Something one would-be robber in Ningbo found out the hard way. After mugging a woman in an alleyway, he discovered that she didn't really have a lot of cash, so he forced her to send him money using WeChat, which was genius. Except for the fact that all WeChat accounts require people to register with their ID, so the police caught him immediately. Well, first they laughed, a lot. He would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for his own stupidity. Remember, by Chinese law, all Chinese companies are required to share user data with the government. Actually, AliPay founder Jack Ma is already offering it up. He talked openly about helping Chinese law enforcement in ways that would make Silicon Valley cringe, like by letting Chinese police look at what AliPay users buy and use patterns to identify potential criminals. Do you really want the Chinese police to be able to monitor everything you buy? 
uh, Mr. Joe, is there a reason you bought a pressure cooker, an alarm clock, and 52 pounds of dried squid at 3 in the morning? I mean, a future where the Chinese government can monitor my every move is kind of scary. But on the other hand, mobile payment is pretty convenient, and I'm already holding my phone. But even if you're not worried about the party state's all-seeing eye, there is the fact that two companies have all of your data, and they're using it in ways that you can't control. Both Tencent and Alipay have recently had privacy scandals, and people are not happy. Now you might be saying, Sure, Shelly, cashless payments are just another way that giant corporations sell us convenience in exchange for all of our personal information, which then becomes another piece of the Communist Party's panopticon surveillance system from which there will be no escape, yada, yada, yada. But what does this mean for China's economy? Well, in the short term, it's great for China's economy. Remember, people paying with their phones spend more. More spending is good for local businesses, which circulates money, which fits in nicely with the party's agenda for restructuring the economy. In October, Chinese leader Xi Jinping said that for China to become a modern economic powerhouse, Chinese people need to increase domestic consumption. That is, they need to buy local stuff, not just export it to the West. We gotta hit that 6.5% growth target somehow, kids. But there are also some potential pitfalls for the economy. Remember how I said that Chinese people in the past did not like debt? Well, there's been a huge surge of people taking on debt in the last couple years because consumers are constantly being bombarded with pitches for loans and investment products via their smartphones. Borrowing $1,000 is now easier than getting to level 7 in Candy Crush. China's central bank expressed concern that short-term consumer credit in China soared 160 percent in the first eight months of 2017 from a year earlier. Now, if you watched our episode on shadow banking, you know that China already has a problem with consumer debt, and this just makes it harder to rein in. And then there are concerns over money laundering and fraud. For example, in Guangzhou, 14.5 million yuan were stolen in QR code scams. The good news is that the government is cracking down on fraud and money laundering. They're putting in new regulations this year. They want to start treating Alipay and WeChat more like banks and set up a central clearinghouse so regulators can more easily track what's actually going on with transactions. Now that being said, as mobile payments increasingly replace cash, a lot of people will be left out of the system. See, it's easy to look at images of middle-class people in sparkling cities and forget that most of China is still really, really poor. In the countryside, the typical person lives off an average of only $4 a day. 21% of Chinese don't even have a bank account. That's like 300 million people who have no way to access mobile payments. That's a lot. It's like the population of 12 Australias, or one America minus, let's say, Texas. Oh, come on, Texans. You keep on saying that you're gonna leave. But back to China. A lot of poor people will be left out of the new cashless society. But you know who else will be? Tourists and other visitors. Because you need to have a Chinese bank account to use mobile payment services. But the world is marching toward a future of mobile payments. And China is leading the way. Actually, if the U.S. hadn't rejected Alipay's takeover of MoneyGram last week on security concerns, we might have even seen it take off much sooner in the U.S. But even so, the future is coming. I just hope it's not the future where they use it to predict crime. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. Once again, I'm Shelly Zhang. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Chris will be back hosting again this Friday. In the meantime, click here on the left to see more China Uncensored episodes about China's economy.